Hey, I'm kind of glad you didn't pick up. I kind of just called to hear your voice. I miss you. I've been thinking about you and I've been thinking about our love and how much I miss you. So here we see two different turbochargers. Can you explain us what are the differences? Single scroll turbocharger and this is a twin scroll turbocharger. The working principle is different because in a single scroll turbocharger we have that all the manifold which are connected to the engine head, to the exhaust port of the engine head, all the manifold join together in a common volume which is the collector which is connected to the entry of the turbine. So, the exhaust gases exit from each cylinder, running through the manifolds, and then the manifolds are joining in a unique volume. The kinetic energy of the, of the pulse generated during the valve opening, the exhaust valve opening period, this, the kinetic energy of the pulse, the pulses is wasted inside this common uh, manifold uh, as a form of pressure. So we have that uh, a single scroll turbocharger works at, at constant pressure. The kinetic energy of, e of each pulse generated uh, when exhaust valve opens is wasted as heat inside uh, this collector. Entry side of the turbine is uh, almost always at a constant pressure. So even if uh, during uh, the, uh, the different engine cycles, we have transients, uh, so we have a very unsteady gas flow. We have that the condition and at the um, entry of the turbine is almost con constant pressure turbocharger. A, a twin scroll turbocharger instead has two main advantages. First of all, it's more efficient. The exhaust gases uh, has uh, both pressure and uh, kinetic energy as a form of energy. We have uh, two different turbine entries. This is uh, usually used where you have an engine with uh, a, a number of cylinders uh, greater than two for e each bank at least and where the firing events are as much uh, uh, separated as possible. First of all it is more efficient. Why? For example for a four cylinder engine the four manifolds are not joined in a same unique volume but uh, are separated in two different collectors which are connected to the turbine inlets. And what is the main advantage is that since the turbocharger is placed as close as possible to the engine, we have that the exhaust gas pulses can arrive up to the turbine wheel. So we have we can take advantage of the kinetic part of the energy of the exhaust gases. So this system is called pulse turbocharging in a way that we can recover the part of kinetic energy which is normally wasted in a single scroll turbine or in a constant pressure turbocharging system. So part of the energy is recovered, so it's more, more efficient. Another uh, advantage is that uh, it has uh, two different entries because uh, we have two scrolls. Here you can't uh, see because there is a thermal protection. A twin scroll turbine has two scrolls with a little channel and a, a, a greater channel. And we have a, a wheel which has different turbine edges and with different angles and different um, orientation. One scroll is used to spin up the turbine wheel as soon as possible. So you said that using the twin scroll turbocharger we can increase the response for the engine. Yes. So maybe we can talk about the turbo lag that uh, one of the questions asked on Instagram. Yes, the main feature of a twin scroll turbocharger is to be able to spin up the rotor as soon as possible. One of the main disadvantages 
of the turbochargers are that they are not uh, of the same nature as the engine. Engines, internal combustion engines, are uh, displacement, uh, positive displacement machines. So they elaborate a certain amount of air for each engine cycle. While a turbocharger is a turbo machinery, so they are very different in nature. A turbo machinery uh, is not able to elaborate uh, a fixed amount of air per cycle. So a, a sort of great difference between the two kinds of machine and this is a problem when we have to couple a turbocharger to the Optua engine. Turbo lag is a phenomenon which is generated when we are, for example, at a very low engine speed but we have to accelerate the engine as fast as possible. The problem is that when we are at low engine speed, exhaust gases has low energy. So this low energy is not able to spin up the turbine wheel immediately. So we have a sort of delay between time interval when we open the throttle and when the exhaust gases reaches the right amount of energy needed to spin up the turbine wheel. We have this delay, this time delay when we open the, the throttle. In a twin scroll turbocharger, we can reduce this phenomena of the turbo lag. Why? When we are at low engine speed and we open immediately the throttle, we have that even if the exhaust gas energy is quite low, we can speed up the part of the wheel turbine in a way that we have a quicker response, so a very fast response even on the compressor. So we can open the throttle body. The delay time between the increasing of speed of the turbine wheel and consequently the compressor wheel is very, very, very reduced. Basically, we have that manifolds and scroll are more complex to produce, so are more expensive. And uh, another disadvantage is, for example, that uh, at high, high load and high energy speed, the turbine wheel is not as inefficient as uh, the single scroll. So, the single scroll has uh, the disadvantage that uh, we can't reduce uh, so much uh, the turbo lag without decreasing the turbine, the turbocharger dimension. Uh, a very important and uh, interesting thing is that uh, turbo lag is uh, very dependent uh, on the turbocharger size, so reducing the volumetric mass flow rate. So it's always a compromise because if you reduce the size of the turbocharger, you increase the response of the engine, so you reduce the turbo lag, but you are limited in maximum engine power because if you can deliver to the engine a lower amount of air, we are close to the, the choking line of the compressor, of the compressor map. So another question on Instagram that I took. What are the differences between supercharger and turbocharger? So one first uh, very important difference uh, is that uh, superchargers are mechanically coupled to the engine. So the energy used by the supercharger to increase the amount of air delivered to the engine is uh, taken from the engine. So the engine crankshaft. So uh, compared to a turbocharger, we have uh, for sure a less efficient uh, system because turbochargers uh, uses the exhaust uh, gases energy, which normally would be wasted from the exhaust, and uh, recover part of the heat or kinetic energy in the exhaust gases and uh, uses this energy to uh, force more air into the engine. So. It's a smart way to recover uh, energy from uh, which uh, normally will be wasted, wasted uh, in the atmosphere. Well, the superchargers use uh, the energy directly from the engine. Usually, superchargers are coupled with the engine crankshaft by a belt, and there are a lot of kind of superchargers. One very common is, uh, for example, the roots. So maybe you see Fast and Furious, <laughs> where uh, the Dominic Cars has uh, this very big uh, uh, 
part uh, on the hood. And that well. everyone likes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, everyone likes it. For example, the direct was connected uh, through a belt and put uh, on the top of the engine, so it was uh, over the roof. With supercharging, we pay the fact that uh, the energy is a uh, uh, mechanical energy, so it's a uh, more uh, valuable kind of energy, uh, differently to turbochargers, where uh, we have the turbo lag phenomena. With superchargers, uh, we have uh, almost uh, an uh, immediate response uh, of the engine due to the fact that uh, it's uh, uh, directly connected to the crankshaft. So talking about the supercharger and turbocharger, if I want to put on my car, how I'm gonna decide or how I'm gonna select which one is better for my car, supercharger or turbocharger? So normally you choose to use a supercharger where you need a, a very uh, responsive engine. So. Uh, you prefer to have uh, uh, an uh, immediate response uh, of the engine power output uh, and uh, you can uh, sacrifice uh, part of the fuel energy so you, you are not so interested in the fuel efficiency or for example you can, uh, you can use uh, both of the system for example uh, I think Audi or Volkswagen has uh, a volumetric uh, supercharger, a root supercharger and uh, a turbocharger system coupled in a way that uh, the supercharger works uh, when we have a uh, low engine speed. So we have an immediate response of the, of the engine when we open the throttle uh, uh, immediately. Then, when we reach a certain engine speed, uh, a bypass valve uh, deviates the flow to the turbocharger in a way that uh, we can use the engine more efficiently and uh, we have uh, a certain pressure ratio with uh, a le le less uh, uh, energy wasted uh, from the taken from the crankshaft. There is not a very easy equation to, to, to size or to design there is uh, never an easy way engineering no. <laughs> no. something. It's too complicated. We can say instead that for supercharger it is possible to express uh, and to say something about uh, um, the relation between the supercharger and the engine. Why? Because superchargers are a positive displacement machines, so are volumetric machines similar to engines. So we are coupling a machine which is uh, which have the same nature as the engine. So, we can simply equate the volumetric mass flow rate of uh, the two machines. We have that uh, on a side we have uh, the volumetric mass flow rate of the compressor, of the supercharger, and on the right side we have the mass flow rate of the, uh, of the engine. And we can equate because uh, we are matching, we are coupling these two machines. A very important uh, parameter uh, when we want to supercharge an engine is the pressure ratio. The pressure ratio is the ratio between uh, the densities on the manifold and the air density. So when we have, uh, when we say for example that uh, my, my boost or my supercharger or my turbocharger is uh, 2.1, we have that uh, we are referring to this ratio, so we have the air density of the atmosphere on the, on the lower part of the ratio and we have uh, the density of the manifold. On the, on the supercharger outlet or the turbocharger outlet we have an increase of air density which is uh, the main um, goal of a supercharging or turbocharging system. This ratio um, can be derived from this equation, tau is the number of uh, engine slope, so it's, uh, it's related to four or two stroke engines. We have the ratio between the displacement of the supercharger and the displacement of the engine. So the pressure ratio is related to the capacity of the engine and the capacity of the supercharger and the efficiency. So here we have the efficiency of the compressor, the supercharger, the supercharger and the volumetric efficiency of the engine. 
and then we have the, the gear ratio between the transmission ratio between the engine and the supercharger. Keeping constant all these toys, for example, we can increase the pressure ratio, the boost of the supercharger simply varying the transmission ratio between the supercharger and the engine. For example, ambient is uh, for example the Mercedes compressor, a passenger car, where we to increase uh, the power of the engine, to increase the power of the engine we increase the pressure ratio, increasing the transmission ratio. So varying the diameter of the pulley uh, placed on the crankshaft or the pulley placed on the on the supercharger, we can vary the transmission ratio in a way that we can increase uh, the pressure ratio Increasing the pressure ratio, we have higher density, higher volumetric efficiency, higher power.